As tax rates creep up, it's even more important to be tax smart when looking at your investment portfolio. I'm Jack Otter, editor of Barron's.com. I'm here with John Lesser, the president of Plant Marin Financial Advisors. Uh, let's start with an interesting shift that you're making in some of your client portfolios, looking at hedge funds, which you say are not terribly tax efficient, and then moving some of that money into good old-fashioned equities. Exactly. Uh, high net worth investors on the ultra high net worth side are really looking at their asset allocation strategies in light of the increasing tax rates. Tax efficiency is becoming paramount. And so if we look at traditional equities and the capital gains rates that they qualify for in relation to many of the alternative investments, especially on the hedge fund side that produce a lot of ordinary income that are at the high, tax at the highest marginal tax rate, we're starting to see, especially in a low return environment, we're starting to see folks move from many of the direct hedge funds and fund of funds into many of the liquid alternatives on the uh, mutual fund format side, such as Wasatch Long Short and Robico Long Short. So even though you're, you're moving over to the equity side mutual funds, you're still being a little bit conservative in terms of, of how much exposure you have to stock market risk. Exactly. It's still a hedge strategy, so it is long short, so it should provide some downside protection, be much more cost effective, and hopefully more tax efficient. So these mutual funds that are long short, my impression was there's a fair amount of trading going on there, so you're going to get hit with a decent amount of short-term capital gains taxed at ordinary income rates. There still is, but in relation to many of the direct hedge funds or the fund of funds, we think it's more tax efficient, and hopefully the numbers over the long term will bear that out. Now also, municipal bonds, uh, they had a, a rough patch in 2013, uh, but the tax equivalent yields are still looking pretty good. Yeah, munis are, are very, very favorable right now, and especially as folks get their tax returns this year and see the increase in taxes that they're going to be paying. With the new law, folks may be experiencing a 20 to 30, 40 percent increase in their overall taxes. So it's forcing them to sit down and take a look at their fixed income alternatives and just review the overall asset allocation. And munis, on a tax-adjusted basis, are very compelling. Now, do you, do you stick to the short end there, or is it the whole muni universe you look at? We are concerned about rising interest rates and, obviously, the quality. So we like very high-quality munis on the shorter end of the yield curve. Okay. Now, finally, it, it's, it's, a, it's an old rule of tax planning, but people don't always follow it. Asset location. It's important where you put it. You've obviously got tax-advantaged accounts, and so you want the least tax-efficient assets to be there, right? That's exactly right. Asset location is very, very important. And this is where you really need to coordinate with your tax preparer or your CPA and really share with them your investment strategy and how you're invested. Because the differences can be tremendous, especially on a long-term basis when we're looking over a 20, 30, 40-year time horizon. The difference between ordinary income tax rates and capital gains rates, the highest ordinary income tax rate is 43.4%, and the highest capital gains rate is 23.8%. So it's still almost double the tax for the ordinary income uh, piece of your portfolio. So sheltering that in tax-deferred accounts is very, very appropriate. So what are some general rules of thumb? Do you do like, say, stocks in a brokerage, a taxable account, maybe bond income, keep that in the tax advantage account? That's exactly right. You want to have your capital gain assets in the brokerage account so it qualifies for the 20% rate or the 23.8% rate and all your ordinary income producing assets, if possible, depending on your, your overall financial independence and cash flow needs in the tax deferred account so you get the best income tax leverage possible. And to the extent that you have any losses in those stocks, uh, then the tax code suddenly becomes your friend. That's exactly and, and you can take those, uh, those, deduct those gains or those losses from your gains. That's exactly right. Tax loss selling, which historically is done at the end of the year, we're encouraging clients to look at it all throughout the year. In this high tax environment that we're in, any losses can be generated all throughout the year and utilized against any other gains. So it's important to pay attention to it day to day and month to month, especially with the volatility in the markets. Thanks very much. Thank you.